Hi, my name is Carl Willis, and I'd like to share with you today a uh, simple uh, neutron experiment that can be done with modern materials, accessible to anybody in the United States, uh, and fairly inexpensive. Uh, I'm going to show you a source of neutrons and uh, how it behaves, and uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how easy it is to put together. What we have in front of us here is a, uh, a neutron detector uh, comprising a helium-3 proportional tube, which is this uh, aluminum tube here, uh, a moderator and reflector, which is this white polyethylene plastic, and over on the left-hand side is a Ludlum-12 rate meter that has been set up to uh, count the pulses from this tube and supply it with high voltage. You'll notice the needle is way down at the left-hand side of the, uh, the screen on the meter, but there are some counts coming in, maybe one per second or so. Um, this is an extraordinarily sensitive detector, and uh, there are some neutrons that are naturally occurring. Uh, not very many, but uh, they're produced by cosmic rays and a few by naturally occurring materials. So uh, that accounts for a low level of background in this detector. So anyway, we've got a detector set up. I have three objects on the front of the table. They are a, another piece of plastic, obviously. A polonium-210 source. This is uh, five millicuries. And yes, that is millicuries of material. Eh, that doesn't work so well. This comes from uh, Amstat Industries, if you live here in the United States, it's fairly inexpensive. It's about $175 uh, uh, to lease this per year. The polonium is said to come from uh, the Mayak plant in Russia near Chelyabinsk, and uh, it's produced uh, by fuel reprocessing there, uh, presumably from RBMK fuel, although I'm not sure anybody knows for sure. Uh, anyway, this is a very strong alpha source, accessible to anybody. You do not need a license, um, or it's generally licensed, meaning you don't need a specific license. You just have to follow the, the terms and conditions of the general license. But again, about $175, you can buy this now and uh, use it in the manner I'm, I'm demonstrating. The third object here is a little piece of silvery metal. It's not a very common metal, but with all the element uh, dealers on eBay these days, it's uh, uh, fairly easy to obtain. This is beryllium, of course. You don't need to worry about beryllium in the bulk form, like this. You need to worry about your health if the beryllium is powdered or is, uh, you know, in flake form. Those are, those are very dangerous to your health. But the solid pieces, this cost me about 50 bucks on eBay and uh, there does not seem to be a shortage in the supply. So one by one I'm going to put these items in the trough next to the neutron detecting tube. We'll start with the polonium-210 and we'll observe the uh, counter for any signs of additional neutrons while we're doing this. And as best I can tell that counter hasn't changed very much at all it's staying down there near the, uh, the zero mark uh, with the occasional pulse from a naturally occurring neutron. Now we'll put the piece of beryllium in here. And again, note no change on the detector. And finally, for completeness sake, I'll go ahead and put this in here, piece of plastic. And again, we note no change on the detector. Now I'm going to assemble these items in a slightly different way. Watch the meter. I'm going to take the piece of beryllium and I'm going to place it on top of the alpha particle source. And we note at once 
The meter has something to say about that. In fact, it's most of the way upscale. That's easily a good ten times or so what it had been doing, just from natural neutrons. And now, I'll put the piece of plastic in there. And we notice that the meter swings off scale at times now. So let's take apart this assembly and again uh, observe what happens. The plastic is gone. We've seen the needle come down a little bit, maybe 30% or so. I'll now take the piece of beryllium off of the uh, alpha source. We notice the needle comes almost all the way down to zero. And just for just for the sake of doing this whole thing again because I like neutrons, we will uh, reassemble our little ad hoc neutron source. So there we have it. This is a uh, a uh, plut or a polonium beryllium neutron source. These were an important type of neutron source uh, early in uh, physics research before the advent of reactors and accelerators. They've mostly been supplanted now, but you can still find this type of neutron source in some instructional settings and as a startup source in some uh, smaller nuclear reactors. So thanks for watching. Again, this whole thing, not the helium-3 tube, but, uh, but everything else fits nicely in a budget of uh, $200, really. And uh, uh, you can have yourself a neutron source that um, is easily detected. Um, I can't really say if it's particularly useful for things like uh, activation experiments, but this is a wide open field for uh, the amateur nuclear enthusiasts to play around with. And uh, so thank you for watching.